I want to encourage you to chase your dream, but with any dream, you have to be willing to put in the work daily to actually see that vision come to life. And today on the Rainmaker Family Show, we interviewed Natalie Argo, where she has big dreams and how she correlates and bring those two things together with her business and desiring to have this incredible farm where people can come and have a retreat and live off of um, the land and everything like that. So I'm so excited for you to dive into her story on how she is building a brand exactly around her dream. Alrighty, welcome to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. I am so excited to have our special guest on today, Natalie Argo, who just so happens to be in our Rainmaker community, but has been building passive income streams over the last several years and is building a brand and raising people up and has these big dreams to help people do more regenerative farming. And I'm just so excited to hear your story and just how you're uh, helping people, creating content and building a brand all around this. So welcome, Natalie. Natalie, we're so happy to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here and really excited to be chatting with you guys. So before we go too much into, I have so many questions for you. I'm so excited to start talking, but um, I know that you said you have been building passive income streams for a while now. And um, where did that all start? Like, where did you and your husband decide like, all right, we have these dreams, but we know that we need to create extra funds for them. Like, have you always been like an entrepreneur, entrepreneur minded or did, were you in the corporate? world before this? Like, just tell us more about you. Yeah, that's a great question. So I've always been super entrepreneurial. I actually, my dad always encouraged me. So my maiden name is Carol and he would say, Carol, like hang your own shingle one day. Don't do what I did. Like he was a surfer and helped build up the skateboard community. And he always dreamed of having his own surf shop, but did the corporate ladder thing instead. And so he really wanted me to be able to hang my own shingle. And so he was always kind of like instilling that in me. And I remember very specifically, like my first entrepreneurial dollar was at this uh, little beach shack thing in Santa Barbara where my dad lived at the time. And I had drawn these people that were eating next to us. And he's like, you should go sell them your drawing. And I was like, sell them my drawing. I'm nine. How do I do that? Like, I don't even know. And so I walked up to them and I just said like, hey, you know, I I drew this of you. And I don't even remember what I said. Probably like, it's for sale if you want it. Like, what does a nine-year-old say? But I remember they bought it from me and it was like $20. Like that's more than the tooth fairy left for me at the time. And so I was like, this is really cool. I can make stuff and people will want to buy it. Like that's really neat. And that's just been in my heart ever since. Um, and really before joining Rainmakers, I mean, seriously, like last year, uh, doing what I do with Hey, It's a Good Life, I've always had this desire to make products. And even before that, like my family and I were like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool? You know, if we could make this, if we could do that. And literally last year, I was like, God, I literally said this. I was like, God, I just welcome what you have for me in the universe. Like, I really want to know how to make products and I don't know how to do that, but I know that there's a way. And that same week, my friend posted what she had been earning with what she was doing with Rainmaker. She was doing drop shipping and still is. But yeah, so I was like, wait, this is legit. Like, tell me more about this. And then obviously took the challenge and was just like hook, line, sinker. Like, this is for me. So it started really young. It's been with me ever since. And I'm so excited to enter into this new season of developing products for my homesteading community and, and dreamers just like me. So that's awesome. So yeah. cool. I love how, um, you've always had this entrepreneurial bent, but you also now are integrating that and kind of converging it with your other passion, which is, uh, the regenerative farming. How, do, what's the start of that? So we heard kind of the spark of entrepreneurship where that started. Where did the regenerative farming come from? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I remember being a really little kid and being in the supermarket and being like, where does this all come from though? Like, I don't understand. Like there's this disconnect and this curiosity. And I've always kind of been like that. Like, I remember being six years old and asking my parents like, but who am I? Like this giant philosophical (laughs) question of like a six-year-old. And so there's always been this question for me and that deep dive into our food system really started when my dad got cancer. I was halfway through uh, my college program at the time and my dad was a super healthy guy, but little did we know like he'd been doing all of these things wrong 
And so he started eating organic and, and he tried all these different things. And it really opened my eyes uh, to how broken our food system is. And unfortunately, he ended up passing. And so I was obviously devastated. And that was kind of like, you know, we, I've heard you guys on other podcasts talk about like the dark night of the soul and the hero's journey. That was definitely an abyss moment for me. And I just went inwards and started researching everything I could research. Around that time, my friend Paul, who I played volleyball with on the beach, he and his wife, Lindsay, they started this thing called Primal Pastures. And that's a regenerative farm out here in Marietta. I was watching what they were posting. And so I'm doing my own research. I'm watching food Inc. I'm watching all these things. Well, then I'm watching my friends do it live and post all these facts about like, what is the food system really like? And so then that led me on an even deeper nosedive. And that led me to Joel Salatin and everything he's doing out there in Virginia with Polyface Farms, which led me to Justin Rhodes, which showed me like, oh, a family can raise their own food and do it on a small scale, which then led me to Jessica Sowers of Roots and Refuge. And that really pushed me to start my YouTube channel and make my waiting room my classroom as she's so popularized that saying. And um, she's become a dear friend. And I, I said yes to my 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 dream of farming um, because of all of that. And because I really believe that we can do food better, we can do community better, uh, we can do dreaming and raising leaders better. And I think that all can fit together on a regenerative farm. And so that kind of became the goal for us was like, okay, I know that I don't want to work in these four walls as a counselor anymore. I think we can take this outside of four walls. What does that look like? And so we painted this vision and we're like, okay, yeah, let's, let's do it. And so that's what we've been chasing after is like this regenerative farm dream, doing food better, doing community better, family better. And we're just slowly taking baby steps slowly, but surely to get there um, and learning a lot along the way. That's amazing. I think one of the things that Chelsea and I have really leaned into, um, we moved into this house about two years ago and there's a little bit more land in the backyard. And so we're just in like this, like, there's so much potential here, but what do we do? Right. Mm -hmm. And for years we wanted chickens. We finally got chickens. So that was Yay. awesome. Um, <laughs> Chelsea went, went big into the gardening. Like, I feel like when you were, when Kaizen was really young, well, you mm -hmm. started at our old house, I yeah. believe when you were pregnant. I started my first year when I was pregnant and I was, I had been so sick and it was kind of like this, I started the garden too late, but it was just this thing where I, I had a burst of energy. I was probably in my second trimester. I had this burst of energy and I was like, Steven, let's go to the store. So I went <laughs> to the store and got plants and like Steven made me two planter boxes and it became this thing that I would go outside and I would just like, as I'm growing a baby, I'm also growing these plants. And it became this like spiritual place for me and a place of joy because I felt so sick. So I would come outside and it'd be like this refreshment. And the sad thing was I really couldn't eat any of the produce <laughs> that year because it didn't make my stomach feel good, but I didn't care. Yeah, and it was just this was joyful thing. And then the fun part is that then the next year when Kaizen was born, we would go out and hang out in that area and he started eating tomatoes. And then, so my garden garden gets better and better every year. Yeah. That's kind of like my goal. And when we moved, the movers thought we were a little crazy because yeah. we were like, can you move these, this garden? <laughs> yeah. And so we had them like transport like a bunch yeah. of plants over to our new house. Not now, crazy like, at all. Yeah. <laughs> Fully support this decision. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so now our garden is, is, I mean, this year was very, very much so thriving. And mm -hmm. every year Chelsea is like stretching it. Yeah. Like she's like, I want more, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so like, it's so fun. And so we're, we're just dreaming and planning. But yeah. I think this year more than ever, we've had just way more family meals with good food, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, food bought at the farmer's market, food we grew ourselves. And I mean, quality ingredients, mm -hmm. it's insane. It goes so far. And I know, talk about that. Like, um, as you did your research on the food industry and, you know, you know, processed foods and, or, you know, organic and even the things in, in the organic label, I'm putting yeah. it in air quotes, you know, yeah. <laughs> what were some of those like big aha moments that you kind of discovered, but you were also like, I feel like I could really help people break out of these things. Man, wow, that's a really good question. Uh, so many little factoids pop to pop into my mind, like researching uh, just even chickens, like when it says free range, that that can actually mean that it's just access to the outdoors with a little hole mm -hmm. about this big. It's like, wait, that's not it's not free range. That's mm -hmm. the same thing. But now there's a hole this big that they might be able to get outside. Like what? The organic label. I love that you did air quotes. Like obviously you're in the know with that. Like I have <laughs> friends who grow corn out in South Carolina and they were telling me like, yeah, you know, they actually don't have to label if something is sprayed with storicide, but that mm -hmm. it can still be organic 
or yeah, just weird rules and weird loopholes that really don't serve people, but like serve, Mm. I mean, to be so cliche, like serve corporate greed. And it's, it's sad not to say that every corporation is a bad one, but like the food industry is very broken and there are a lot of people making a lot of money on greenwashing and all, all of these things. Like, I don't know how far we want to get down that rabbit hole, but it's, you have to be informed as a consumer if you want the best for your family. It, it, it's just how it goes. Yeah. So totally. I'd love to hear, and then we'll probably transition just talking about like your brand and how you built that up. Cause I think there's a lot of people in our community or a lot of people hearing this that have big dreams and maybe are already, you know, creating a YouTube channel or a space and want to connect with other people. So I'd love to hear your process in that, but what does your family do on a daily basis or sorry, weekly basis, as far as like, where are you shopping? What are you looking for? I guess more of like on a practical side of things. Yeah, it's a good question. So I do kind of a combination um, to save money. I recently started placing orders with a company called Azure Standard. That's helped a lot, like decrease our budget on some of those staple items. And then I stop at our like natural health food store and try and support local where I can. So we have some local farms that you'll either go in person to or go to the farmer's market. And all of that like eventually adds up. So those are things that we do, you know, as far as where we're purchasing things and then making those little lifestyle changes. Like even just last year, I was like, okay, even if we don't, completely use this or utilize this, I'm going to start building these habits into my life. And two of the habits that are now weekly rituals for us is I make like a gaps style chicken. So boil a chicken in water and then, you know, use all the meat for enchiladas or barbecue chicken or whatever it is, and then save the broth. And the broth is so, so good for you. And so now every week we have broth. Now, do we drink it every day religiously? No, but it's there and we're building this habit. Also sourdough. I was like, I cannot justify spending Five seventy five on an organic loaf of bread that is like going to go bad in a couple days and isn't really organic. Like <laughs> no more, no more. So last year, my friend Sally gave me some sourdough starter and I now lovingly call it Sally. It sits on my counter and in my fridge and I make a sourdough loaf every week. And whether we eat it, you know, for sandwiches or just kind of munch on it, it makes a great snack for Ruby, my one-year-old. If she's like hungry and needs a snack right now, I'm like, oh, got a, got a little piece of sourdough. So there's like these little lifestyle shifts that we do weekly now that just help us live a, a little bit more simply, a little bit more health-minded. And I think every single little shift like that, it eventually adds up and they become these like rhythms and, and rituals in our lives. I love like the whole regenerative farming, but even just like sourdough or like mm-hmm. just the way nature is wired, it just gives us clues about how to be better stewards of our resources. You know, like if you know the system, right, you know how to, you know how to nurture something, oftentimes you can multiply things like, you know, like having chickens is not that much work, but we get eggs almost daily from them. And it's pretty, it's, it's amazing. Like the return on investment to have eggs every single morning, you know, like just, and again, we don't eat them every morning, but they'll stack up. We give them away. Like it's so amazing. Or like sourdough. It's like you, okay, do the work initially. And then you can work off this same thing for years and years and years. And I love that concept. It's really just like, how can we do more with less, which is, Mm -hmm. which is a key thing we do in Rainmakers. It's really our theme of this year is like, you know, how can we double our impact with half the hustle, right? How can we, as parents, you know, increase our income without, you know, neglecting our kids? Like this is the whole theme. And so that's why I am always giving gardening analogies in Rainmakers (laughs) and on this podcast, even though I'm not like a professional gardener, (laughs) I just love like the, um, the insight that's there. How have you seen, like, even in your entrepreneurship journey, kind of the lessons from regenerative farming translate over there where, where you're seeing yourself you know, maybe do something on YouTube, but then, you know, multiplying it to Instagram and like kind of doing more with your time. Have you seen kind of lessons from the, from the field come yeah, into definitely. your business? Yeah, definitely. Such a good question. And on the note of like yielding abundance, I was just thinking about that this morning, how when I use a sourdough starter, you know, you leave this much in the jar and then you have enough to feed it. And then again, make 10 loaves or share with friends. And you're so right that when we look to nature and how nature's actually run, not like monocrops and like modern day farming. But when we look at regenerative farming, it's such a beautiful picture of what can be yielded in abundance. And I'm getting ready right now. And to tie this into your next question, um, I'm getting ready right now to expand our worm farm. And that's like this little niche that I've carved out within the homesteading niche for myself, because there was a problem and I offered a value proposition. I was like, okay, us urban homesteaders really don't have space to compost. So I'm going to learn how to vermicompost because you can compost in a lot 
a lot in a small space. So I was looking at the compost and I was like, you know, I have a couple of worms, but we're going to put those in all of the bins and then we're going to have more worms really soon. And it's just this, it really is this beautiful picture. Um, but going to your question, as far as like, how have I seen, you know, regenerative farming impact this entrepreneurial journey? I think one of the coolest things that I've learned recently, I was pregnant with Ruby last year and I said, okay, I know a lot about vermicomposting because I've been doing it for two or three years now and it's going pretty well. I wonder if I could help people with this. And I thought, okay, YouTube is like SEO based. It's listening and transcribing everything I, I say. So I wonder if I said like worm farm a bunch of times in one video, like what would happen? And I annoyed myself. I don't know what the word count is on Worm Farm for that video, but you know what? That video took off. And now, like for me, I'm still a pretty small channel. I've got like 16,000 subscribers on YouTube, but that video has almost like 55,000 views or something. And what was so cool is I told myself, I told myself, all right, let's see what happens if I make a playlist on this. And then I offer additional products. And I just offered two products, a freebie, like how to start your worm farm, but then also like a book, which is like this more comprehensive guide. And now I'm making passively $10. I was just telling Tommy, I was like, I made $100 in eBooks in the last week because this video is taking off. And so this idea of having passive income through YouTube and blogging and Instagram and all these things, it's like, wow, I told myself I couldn't quit for five years and I'm so glad that I haven't quit. And I'm, I think this is technically year four because eventually it really does add up and eventually there really is this abundance. Uh, but you have to learn things along the way. And I was a grandma, like I was not on social media at all before I started this journey. And so there's been like a really steep learning curve, but you know, you, you try these different things, you know, you sow some seeds for example, as you like to say. So I sowed some seeds into this worm farming niche and then I'm, I'm now seeing the fruit of that and it's just multiplying and it's really exciting. So I'm like, oh, okay, can I build a funnel? Like, okay, I think I need to make a course. Like <laughs> yes. I'm going to teach people how to do worm farming and yes. yeah, I'm going to take the one funnel away class and we're going to get all these awesome. more worm farmers. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's been a big translation for sure in the entrepreneurial journey. I love that. Wow. So, so awesome. And I think one thing um, we've been talking about a lot on this podcast lately and in our community is really just documenting the journey. And I think you're doing that so well. It's just like, hey, guys, I haven't fully arrived, but let me just tell you what I've learned, you know, because yeah. you don't need to be like the guru on the top of the mountain who's like, I know everything, you know, but just being yeah. like, I might be a couple chapters ahead than the last person mm -hmm. and um, I can help them get ahead yeah. by just sharing the journey. So um, how have you kind of discovered your own voice in that? Like going on Instagram, going on YouTube, was that something naturally you were like, I love being on camera or is it just something that you took a step of faith in and you've gotten better at over time? Um, take us on that journey of just how has it been documenting the journey as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I tell everybody the same thing, document the journey, even if it's just for yourself, like document the journey. And then eventually you'll be able to share it with other people. And I don't know who said this, but I don't know who said this, but it just takes being one step ahead of the next person to be able to teach somebody. And that's kind of what I told myself with the worm farming thing is like, well, I've only been doing this two or three years. I didn't like go to worm farming college, but I can help somebody who doesn't know. Like I was really overwhelmed. So how can I help that person? To your question of like, how did I get started with this? <laughs> so I was a counselor at the time, finishing my 3000 hours towards licensure as a marriage and family therapist. And that journey is so crushing. Like it is so hard to any marriage and family therapist listening. Like I feel for you. <laughs> it's so, so hard. I worked in all these different fields and, you know, a lot of times you're working with people that are just in really dire straits and they need a lot of help and it's very taxing. And you know, you're supposed to be this expert, but you're also an intern. It's just, it's like really psychologically difficult. I just remember being so tired and so exhausted. I was like, I need something for me. And I was sitting on the apartment patio and I had been doing these like Facebook lives when Facebook live came out. I was like, look at my plants. Like, Hey, I grew this. <laughs> and so I was like, I wonder if there's like an, an Instagram community for that. And then I looked, and I was like, wait, there's like gardeners on Instagram. Like, this is so cool. So at first it was like the secret that I didn't tell anybody about. I had this farm dream that I didn't tell anybody about. And I was like, this is like just me. Nobody's going to know my name. I'm going to have like the secret name. I'm not going to show my face. I'm just going to be like, this is like my little secret oasis. And then I realized I felt very convicted. I was like, hang on, if I'm going to garden on my apartment patio and was depressed that, you know, I couldn't garden for a long time, like other people need to know that it's possible. 
And so I said yes to documenting the journey. And that's when I got the camera out and I'd always kind of wanted to do a YouTube channel. And so I went from being like this faceless person with a little oasis to herself to like, no, I'm going to show other people and I'm going to be vulnerable. And this whole journey is very vulnerable. I, I tell myself, mm -hmm. like, be proud of yourself that you're putting yourself out there because, you know, we haven't arrived and we're like declaring our dreams into reality before they're really there. And that is hard. Like the root word of vul vulnerability, I believe means something like the ability to be cut. And so mm -hmm. people can like step into our lives now and it's crazy on YouTube. Like people can leave these terrible comments. <laughs> it's like just these faceless commenters that just say these really yeah. nasty things sometimes, you know, those things don't really get me down because there are so many other people who are like, I'm so glad you did this. Or like now people start to reach out and they're like, you know, I'm an apartment gardener. I have a farm dream and like your dream is encouraging me. And so as hard as it's been and as many abysses as there have been along the way, I mean, I'm so, so glad that I started it. I mean, I, another part of my story is that I had this really serious injury. I, I strained both my psoases, psoas muscles, and I couldn't bend over. I couldn't do anything garden related. And so I was very sick for a very long time. And so I wanted to quit so many times, you guys. <laughs> I wanted to be like, no, I'm not supposed to do this. But I just had this deep conviction, like keep going. Just because you're pressing pause doesn't mean you're quitting. It just means you need to take care of yourself. Or like you guys have talked about in the past, like there's a lesson to learn here or a, some, a lesson to learn. Yeah. There's a lesson to learn. And so even if I've had to press pause, you know, with having a baby or recovering from an injury, it's like, okay, we're going to keep going. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, but we keep pressing forward. And I just feel really convicted to keep sharing our journey to enc encourage other people. And, and now we're developing this other side where it's like, all right, how are we equipping people to go after their dreams? Whatever they may be, they don't have to be homesteading. It could be anything. So we're kind of at a pivot point right now. I like to joke, like there's a little Ross Geller in my head who's always yelling, pivot, pivot. So we're <laughs> pivoting again, but yeah, just so grateful to have said yes to the journey and, and definitely believe in the power of documenting your journey and learning your story and telling that to people. Yeah, I love that. Natalie, you gave so many amazing gold nuggets, like <laughs> right in what you just said, as far as, um, just embracing the journey and just starting and know that it'll pay off. Like I remember when we started Rainmakers, even like before that, our wedding business, like I would blog three times a week, you know, and it felt like, is anybody reading this? Is anybody? And then several, several years in, I'd run into people and be like, oh, I read your blog. And, and now that we've retired out of the wedding industry, we're still getting inquiries from this blog thing that I built up over the years. And it, you know, I think with social media, like it ebbs and flows, like sometimes you're really killing it and you're showing up and you're doing reels and you're sharing your life. And then there's other weeks or months where something else is more important or you just have to press pause. But the important thing is, is that you keep going and you keep putting in the work and you keep believing in that dream and keep putting the time in, you know, it's all about who you become in the process. So I love that you laid that out so beautifully in your life and, and, and like what you're doing. So that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think there's a real value in, in being authentic to who you are. Like I just started doing reels and it makes my husband cringe sometimes, like some <laughs> of the stuff I do, but I'm speaking to like the deepest parts of me, like being this crazy chicken leader, being this crazy plant lady. And then that yeah. speaks to other people. And even when you have to press pause, like when you have that genuine connection with somebody, they're going to be there for you. Like I joke mm -hmm. on YouTube, if I've been gone for a little while, I'm like, you know, the algorithm gods are frowning down upon me, but I know <laughs> you guys are there. Like, thank you so much for staying tuned. And you know, they're there. They're like, we're here. We're so glad you're back. And, and so I know in a world where it's like, be consistent, like keep showing up. Like you can't miss a day of posting. Like when you have a real audience that you're connecting with from your truest self, like they're going to be there. And so, mm. yeah, I have to tell myself that as a mom who has to take lots of breaks <laughs> and mm -hmm. press pause and kind of hop back into things. So that's so true. Yeah. There are people, you know, there are so many people in the world, first of all, and there's so many people on the internet that you can totally be yourself and people mm -hmm. will resonate with you. And, yeah. and they, they buy into your story whether it's watching your reels or watching your YouTube channel. I was just watching a documentary last night. I was going down a YouTube rabbit hole last night. You guys, oh, no. um, it went deep, but <laughs> I, finally at 1130, I'm like, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> but I was watching some documentary and some YouTuber who like made this very deep video as a 19 year old. Mm -hmm. And it just was like so wise. And then he just disappeared. And mm -hmm. like, but because of the impact this one video had, in so many people's lives, like people just thought about him for years. Like it would come up, where'd this guy go? Where'd this guy go? And he finally came back like three years later and made another video. 
And he still has that audience, you know, from the first wow. video because they like, they resonated with him and they were like, where did he go? It was kind of this mysterious thing. And when he came back, he he's, he's now on YouTube and, and sharing kind of what happened in those three years, but just like people that resonate, you will stick. It's like a, it's like a magnet. They want to stay around you because there's something in you that is for them. It's like, you know, and we always say this, like your breakthrough is not usually just for you, right? It's for someone else. And so sharing your journey by, by not sharing your journey, you're, you can be kind of robbing people of breakthrough, you know? And like you said, Natalie, it doesn't have to be, I I'm very big on not making it too, you know, legalistic or I guess religious, if you yeah. want to say it, like where it's like, you have to post every day. Cause that's when it gets like, you're, str you're striving, you're toiling. And it's like, it, you become a slave to it. You know, and I see a lot of people do this with social media because there is a lot of people out there that do preach the hustle, you know, the hustle, uh, theology. <laughs> I'm using a lot of, uh, words here that I feel like there's, there's relation to, but like, there's a lot of people preaching the hustle gospel of just like, mm -hmm. Hey, get up every morning, you know, do it, do it tired. Like, you know, but, uh, I would rather, um, empower you guys all to just do what's best for today, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is documenting the journey. Sometimes it's, you know, taking a nap, like whatever that ends up being. But I've seen you do that super well, Natalie, in just a short amount of time. If you guys aren't following her, go check out uh, her Instagram. Uh, hey, it's a good life with two Y's. And I want to just plug the reel I just saw um, where you are, there's a leaf blower and leaves involved. <laughs> I haven't seen this yet, but I'm excited. I was like, this is very high production quality for a reel. Uh, basically, she's singing in the backyard. Or you start out in a like a bathrobe or something. Oh, yes. Kinda, yes. Kinda like mom Dion bun. Yeah, it's like mom bun and, and bathrobe. And then all of a sudden, she's like singing with the garden hose. And there's like, uh, you must be your husband. Oh, yes. Blowing leaves with a leaf flower. Oh, so it's like commitment. raining leaves and she's singing in slow-mo. I was pretty impressed. That was amazing. So you can do a lot with your cell phone, you guys. And yeah. it's just, it's humor, but it's, um, it's, it's that thing that's going to get someone to watch. And your caption was about the business, right? It was actually about how to use leaves in your garden, <laughs> right? To like improve your garden. And that's a great, like, I mean, people, it's entertainment, but it's also educational, and I think you're doing that so well. So Natalie, we love on the show to do a, a section sometimes called dreaming forward, where we just dream about the future a little bit. What are you dreaming about? Like the next steps? I know you have a big dream, launching your own regenerative farm, uh, having a retreat center, restoring leaders. What is though in the next year you're feeling like this is my next step. This is my next like um, thing that I'm putting my hand to. What are you dreaming about that's getting you excited right now? So for me, what I'm dreaming for in like the short term near future is our goal is to expand the homestead. And for us, that means buying a house. So we're renters. And part of what we've done in the last year, two years here is show people like, yes, you can homestead where you are, throw a little, hey, it's a good life on it, like proclaim that it's, it's <laughs> going to be okay. But we really want to own a home and we really want to expand. Like our next goal is chickens, which is been a big influence on my new brand, um, which I'm really excited about. That's like what all my my products are going to be is for my fellow crazy chicken ladies. I call myself a crazy chicken lady in waiting because <laughs> I want them so badly, but I couldn't bear to like move the little chickies and it would just be too much. So I'm, I'm just like patiently waiting um, and slowly <laughs> like I'm letting her out on social media a little bit. I'm trying to come up with a name for her. Maybe I'm going to call her like Carolina, the crazy chicken lady. And like she kind of <laughs> is like my alter ego in the waiting period. But yeah, so that's the basis of this new brand. So I'm super excited to launch that. I'm really excited to move. I feel like we're just like, it's just so pregnant with possibilities right now, but we're like waiting mm -hmm. to jump off the edge. But long-term, like I said earlier, and like we've kind of talked about, the goal is really to have this regenerative farm and retreat center. And I was thinking about this. It's like, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I'm just going to say it. So when I was little, my parents got divorced. It's okay. They were best friends later on in life, but there were some tough years. And so my mom would listen to Tony Robbins on cassette in the car. Awesome. And I'd be like, mom, I hate Tony Robbins. Stop listening to him. You know, <laughs> neuro-linguistic programming. She's like trying to be all positive. And like, <laughs> I eventually was like, mom, I cannot stand to listen to this one second longer. Well, fast forward 20 years later, who is the person, one of the people that I go to, to like find inspiration in this journey is Tony Robbins. I'm like, oh my gosh, mom told me about Tony Robbins like 30 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, wow. And so long-term vision, like I hope to have 
Tony Robbins on the regenerative farm and like have a safe place for leaders of that caliber to really like regenerate and, and to recuperate and to get ready to launch. And, you know, maybe we'll do future rainmakers get togethers on the regenerative farm. Like, I just think that would be so fun. My, my goal really is to have a really transformative space for people where they can develop who they are, recuperate whatever they need, and then launch into their dream. Um, so that's like short term and then super long term. So we'll see. We'll it. see how it goes. I, I love that. I believe that is definitely we'll going to be become. There. Yeah, <laughs> we will be there. Rainmakers, you're coming with us as long as Natalie allows. Um, but yeah, you're totally going to get there. I see that just be, you. you know by what you've put in the last couple of years and what you're believing for. That's so cool. Well, I know Stephen mentioned your Instagram just a second ago, but what are some other places that people can find you? Or um, do you have an Instagram when your product is going to launch? How can people connect with you? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm Hey, It's a Good Life on Instagram and on TikTok. And then we're Hey, It's a Good Life on YouTube. We have a website. I need to be better about emailing my people there and like staying up to date there. Uh, But my brand for this new adventure with Rainmakers is the Crazy Chicken Lady Co. So if you want to follow along, yeah. And uh, yeah, Carolina, the crazy chicken lady may be making some very sassy appearances here very soon. So if you want to follow along with that story, I uh, would love to have you there. Awesome. So awesome. Well, thank you, Natalie. Um, this show was so inspiring uh, to all listeners. Go take action. What was that nugget um, from today that you can take action on today or tomorrow? Uh, but make sure it's the right thing for you in this season. And uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys on the next show. Thank you.